Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back to a new episode of Citizen Sleeper. Stumbled over my words for a second there. Uh, yeah, last time we left off, we have our objective to escape on the side reel. But uh, there are a few more things we can wrap up, I guess. So I guess we're going to try and work on that today. Um, so what other things do we have? Grow mushrooms. I don't think I have enough time to grow any more mushrooms, I'm going to be honest. Not only would I have to get the spores, but... Yeah. I just, I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, I, I might I might as well just work on some other things, I believe. It doesn't seem feasible to try and grow those. If I'm leaving on the side reel in a few days... There's no way. There's no way. So let's go up here and see if we can do anything with Bliss. I think I was, yeah, I was waiting on something with you. Mo okay, yeah, wait. Um, this is leaving in a few, in several cycles set out. You will either be on board or not. Wait for the preparations to be completed. So that says red, but I'm guessing I don't have to do anything, right? Like, you just have to wait and then I can choose to leave? Yeah, I think that might be the case. Alright, well, uh, can't really do anything with bliss right now I, I could go work for yet again I mean I could get the mushrooms but they wouldn't grow in time so there's no real point I don't feel I don't really feel like there's a point so yeah I mean I guess let's just do yet again stuff I suppose see what uh, else can happen with this quest line I guess uh, patrol the ward that was what I was doing before, right? Oopsie. Right there. Uh, yeah, I don't want to collect tides. That just sits- that just sits wrong with me. I'll be honest. Boom. Come on. There we go, neutral. I'm fine with that. We can reroll these last ones. Okay, cool. Uh, sure. Do one of those. Uh... Yeah, I mean, we're slowly but surely making our way here. Positive, and... Yeah, we're maxing out on energy here. But yeah, I mean, it was about time for, for a negative, let's be honest. Alright, um... As you say goodbyes to the other enforcers and walk back through the low end, a trupping catches your attention. In a quiet corridor away from the main thoroughfare, someone has stuck a small tape recorder to the wall with suit sealant tape. Written across the fluorescent tape is one word, sleeper. You peel it away from the wall, and as you do, it triggers some kind of improvised trip switch. Sleeper, Sabine's voice crackles through. I have seen you with the Adigan members. Are they holding you captive now, too? A high whine. I'm sorry if I have dragged you into this. Do not trust them. Something is happening within the gang, some kind of power struggle. Cover the speaker a little, their voice too loud in the quiet corridor. I will come soon. Thanks to your efforts, I have located most of our properties. At the right time... A pause. I will see you soon. Don't give up. Remember our deal. The recording cuts out. Stare at the recorder, processing what you've just heard. Hearing Sabine's voice again opens up something inside of you. As an ARP employee, do they know what I know? You struggle with a mix of concern and distrust. You throw the recorder into a nearby waste chute as you leave the corridor, still unsure who to trust, and head quietly out of the low end. Yeah, fair. I don't really know who to trust right now, either. But I do know it's nap time. I guess we can feed our kitty again. It's been a little bit. Here you go, kitty. Enjoy your food. Thank you. Alright. We're good. God, that, that scrap repair ability ended up being so integral. It's funny how easy things are now. For a while there, I was suffering. But now we're mostly fine. Uh, Alright, patrol. Sure. Got two fours here. And... Yeah, this takes forever to build up. I am almost done, though. Sabine said... Wait. But... I'm thinking I do have to progress down this thing a little bit more. Let's go, uh... With one of these, let's go grab, uh... Some... Some stuff. Right? Some of this. Some of the good stuff. Some of that scrap to repair the holes in my body. Here we go. 
cool. Alright, now we can go back over there and finish up the Adigan stuff. I am running out of time, though. And I have two upgrade points, so if I get another point, I can get plus two and something else, but... Nothing to do with that right now, so patrol the ward. What do we got? There we are. I am a Yadigan insider. Hi, Rabia. This time you meet inside Rabia's office, although now that you've seen it, office seems like the wrong term. You find her stood in an almost bare, shadowy unit, midway through a sequence of stretches. Two low stools and a terminal in the corner, but it seems that most of the space is taken up by a heavy punching bag, rubber matting, and a stack of weights. When Rabia turns to greet you, you realize she's missing an arm. The prosthetic she usually wears is set in a cradle near the terminal. A web of colored wires running to it. Updates, she says, noticing you looking where her artificial arm usually is. Nothing to worry yourself with. Of course. Sit, says Rabia, gesturing to the two diminutive stools. You both settle on the stools, Rabia crossing her legs on top and sitting straight backed. Gia told me you have been doing the rounds, collecting tithes, patrolling the ward, she smiles. Some of the enforcers are impressed, and I hear you handled a few difficult circumstances. Nicely done. I wanted to see for myself. Raises an eyebrow, see what for yourself? If I can trust you. I see. Rabia flexes her neck from side to side, in the conclusion. Still deciding. Well, sleeper, Rabia says teasingly, please keep us updated on any progress. She smiles a thin smile. Joking aside, I know that for you, life on the eye has been a struggle. But I hope we can do something about that from here onwards. Though some of our members may not see it this way, I know you two are a refugee. She looks at you solemnly. That's why you've come to us. Enough, Rabia. Sabine's voice cuts through the conversation. I'm tired of listening to your affected nobility. They cross the room, Rabia's baton in their hand, the end lit with sparking electricity. Rabia looks between the two of you. I suppose this ambush was another cooperation between you two? She looks strangely unfazed. No, they are acting alone, yes. Stay silent. Sabine pauses, thrown off by your silence. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not really siding... I, I don't know who to trust yet, but I'm more willing to side with Sabine. Rabia takes this opportunity to- oh shit. She uh, leaps from the stool. okay. Yeah, I didn't know not saying yes would throw you off, Sabine. Rabia takes the opportunity to act. She leaps from the stool and fainting has Sabine, grabs the baton and twists it inwards. She's by far the stronger and she pushes Sabine to her knees, plunging the cracking into the baton towards their chest. They freeze there, Sabine struggling to keep the crackling baton from their skin. Stop! Then you support them. Rabia asks you, her eyes not leaving Sabine. Your loyalties are so easily swayed. I thought you were more than Yannick's attack dog, Rabia. Sabine sits, spits back. You're not able to think for yourself. Rabia holds the baton strong. And for a moment you think she's about to hammer it down in Sabine's chest. But after a painful wait, she throws Sabine down instead. Then spins the baton in her hand, thumbing a switch and shutting it off in a single move. Rabia, explain. They both look at you, each still catching their breath as if they had forgotten about your presence. Explain what? How the moment I call my enforcers will come down here and take them away? Rabia cracks her neck. You're lucky I didn't kill you. I would have had every right. Every right, she shouts, the anger a release of tension more than a threat. Sabine lifts themselves a little. Bruised from the fall, they roll into their side and cough. Rabia gives them some space, sitting back on, their, on the stool. Sabine props her, uh, themselves up on their elbows and fixes Rabia with a hard stare. Sorry, there's... I'm getting Rabia and Sabine mixed up all over the place here. You have something to say, Rabia taunts? Say it. This is your final opportunity, because after this, she laughs, no coming back. What's the point? Sabine breathes heavily. She does not listen to criticism of the great Yadigan project. Rabia collects herself. Speak. She folds her arms and waits to be convinced. Sabine takes a breath, organizing their thoughts. They go to start, pause, then decide on another approach. Eventually they say it. Yannick is a traitor. Rabia immediately flinches, her eyes going to her prosthetic arm, her muscles clenching. But she rides it out, more eager to prove Sabine wrong than she is to hurt them. At least for now. When I came here from Essenarp, they glance at you, gauging your reaction. It was Yannick who was one of the first to support me, to look after me. I should have known then, but I was naive and afraid. Sabine turns to you. Sleeper, they take a breath. 
I know that I should have told you I worked for SNARP long ago, but I thought you would abandon me and you were my final friend. What you should know is that I left SNARP because I was running for my life. I leaked documents on the sleeper program, on the illegal and immoral practices it relied on, to the press. SNARP wanted me dead, and I fled as far as I could, to this refuge at the end of the surrogate systems. Sabine stops to collect themselves. What does this have to do with Yannick? Rabia interrupts. The sleeper knows you are SNARP, I told them. And while you hide beneath the cover of being a whistleblower, you and I both know you worked on the sleeper program. Yannick told me as much. Bean's face falls. It is true. They glance at you and then away, ashamed. They lift their head. But it is Yannick, not me, who is in the pocket of Essenarp. Abia flinches again. I can prove it. He made some kind of deal to keep me here, to tie me up in debt, to lock me away. In exchange... Rabia slams her head on the desk. Just tell us, for God's sake! In exchange for those, Sabine finishes, nodding towards Rabia's prosthetic arm in, the cr in its cradle. He has been using Yadigan enforcers, using you as test subjects for SNR technology. I have the data to prove it. He has been bringing them in under the guise of stolen shipments and having me fit them, knowing each one is capturing data and sending it back to its makers. Rabia's fixed expression has started to fade. Sabine produces a slate. It is all here. Thousands of hours of usage data, failure rates, error dumps. These are untested implants, Rabia. They could short out, fail, cause cascading failures across a person's body. Yeah, so you're all just... You're all just being uh, used as test subjects because they're an evil corp and they don't give a shit about people. And they have... Sabine suddenly looks incredibly tired. Thought the error rate in the units was down to them being stolen or modified. I have tried to fix hundreds of failures in my time. Not all of them. They stop. Unable to continue. Rabia closes her eyes and breathes in. And she opens them again. She holds out a hand to Sabine. Show me, she says. Later, much later, when you leave, Sabine is still taking Rabia through the manifests and usage data. Both of them crowded around the terminal as Sabine takes Rabia through each layer of Yannick's betrayal. As you leave, Sabine catches your eye, and something passes between you, something like a thank you, or a sorry, or some other expression that communicates both sadness and hope. Oh, Well, I'm glad I was able to work that out. I was going to be very, very worried if something happened to Sabine. I was really worried about them for a second there, because I was like, oh no, is my silence going to screw me? Because I basically took the middle road. But, no, I was fine. Enemy and my enemy. Sabine and Rabia have been holed up in her office for a while now. What are they planning? Yeah, okay. So that's still going on. Well, what do I do now? I have a five. Or a six. Let's go over here and... Let, let's go grab some mushrooms just in case. Um, For some reason, I don't get on the side reel and everything. Let's collect some spores. I wish you could get fungus from this, but you just get condition. Because you find mushrooms and eat them, I guess. Yeah, let's just do this. Grove spores. Gimme, gimme. Thank you. I need three to actually plant, so we don't have enough to do that. Yeah, getting enough mushrooms for both Infus and Rico is hard. Alright, it's nap nap time. Go ahead and repair again. I'm just gonna stop feeding the stray. It's not worth it, I don't think. I don't think anything else is coming out of that. I fed them so many times. Alrighty. So, we're good there, we're good there, we're good there. Got some shit rolls. That's gonna be done in three days. The Ascender car. Uh, Bliss is done tomorrow. You're going to be done in two days. I really just don't have a lot going on. There's like nothing happening right now. I mean, I'll go get some more mushrooms and I think otherwise I'll just grind some scrap up. There's this, but I just get cryo and energy from this. Yeah. Eh. Let's uh Collect some more spores. Yeah. You can use one of those for it. Cool. Neutral. And... Whoopsie. Wrong thing. Need to go here to the aviary. 
All right. Oh, wait, I still had more mushroom shit. Yeah, no, that's right. My bad. Okay, so no, we can just get more of these. There we go. Yeah, I forgot you can you can get from it multiple times. You don't just harvest once. Looks like you just got two jerolls there. Can I uh Can I get like, you know, something real good? Two random rares. Okay, there's two Ma Matsutake caps, which I can give to Imphis. That'll be useful, I think. Alright, here's your here's your j j rolls. Please take them. Okay, and one more, we'll finish it off. That way I have two Matsutake to give to uh, Imphis as well. We're good. And I got an update with Rico. Rico, I meet you at the entrance to the lab, leaning on her crutch with a glint in her eye. Walk with me, sleeper. I'd like to tell you a story. She makes her way down the corridor that leads back up towards the main commune building. People first crossed what we call Founder's Gap into the Greenway. They did so against the wishes of Andre Erlen. At the time, Erlen was trying to stabilize the Union and establish control over the Eye in the wake of Solheim's collapse. It was chaos, competing factions, failing systems, so many dead and injured from the riots. That was his priority. Listen. You both crossed the... Uh, through a glass-roofed tunnel, the greenway outside, crowded with vines and branches, dappling the light. Erland had written the greenway off, cut off from the rest of the station, and linked to a broken spoke. Claimed it was only a matter of time before everything here would die. He refused to let anyone abandon their duty to the Union and Cross. They were traitors to the cause, or as good as. Rico continues, making her slow but steady way into the inner gardens of the commune. There weren't many of us, but we believed that what was here was worth saving. We had to keep our plans secret until we crossed, and some of us left people behind. Pauses to catch her voice, or her breath, uh, her voice cracking. Difficult to know from effort or emotion. What we found was a disaster, nothing like what you see here. Half of the greenway was leaking oxygen into space, the plants flashed frozen. The other half was a swamp of mulch, as decaying matter clogged every system. We worked hard, we lost good people, we cleaned up and closed up, but it was never going to be enough. After many, many cycles, we all knew this place was doomed. But we kept on working, talking less and less, because we couldn't face it. We all developed a death wish. If the Greenway was going to die, so would we. What changed? Everything, Rico smiles. We crossed some invisible boundary, tipped some biological scale, and the Greenway started to recover. Plants flowered, crops sprouted. For the first time, we reaped the fruits of our labor. Rico smiles, looking up at you. We thought it was us, that we managed to do just enough to end the cycle of decay. I thought we had saved the Greenway, until today. Passed into the grow beds of the commune, rich with the hustle and bustle of Haifa members planting and harvesting. For a while, Rico was quiet, and you both simply observed the hypnotic movements of the work crews. The eager chatter washing over you like a wave, Rico smiles to herself. Should have known, of course, that our arrogance was unfounded, but we needed to believe back then. Needed a myth to bring more people across the gap. Both move into a smaller corridor, Rico following some direction unknown to you. What you've shown me is that back then the Greenway saved us, not the other way around. Tell me, have you ever consumed one of the Matsutake or roll caps you've been growing? No. They can be difficult to prepare without proper equipment, she muses, but you should try them. After all, they were designed for you. Rico has a mischievous look. First I thought it was the location they were grown in that made the mushrooms from the aviary, from the labs, or from the grove different to each other, but what I have come to understand is that it is the people, it is the person growing them. Matsutake and your roll caps you brought me are totally unique, containing compounds never usually found in similar specimens in my possession. Many of these compounds aren't even digestible for humans, but for a sleeper like you... Rico smiles as she leads you into the internal garden of the commune, where the Haifa members have planted species from all over the greenway. It's interesting, it depends on who plants. Back when the tide turned, when the greenway started to recover, we all felt something, a response. It was as if this place was not just alive, as a forest is alive, but alive in other ways. Communicati communicative, responsive. We shrugged it off at the time, but now I understand why. Miko stops and turns to you. This place is responding to us, adapting itself to us. It is growing fruiting bodies for you, for me. It is adapting, changing, it is... In short, displaying all the signs of sentience. Yeah, that makes sense, given the context of it. The, the plant is basically made for who planted it. How? 
That is what I wish to know, too. What being is in control here? Is it the gardener? Riko sits on the bench within the peaceful gardens and gestures for you to join her. When you have been growing the G-Rolls and the Matsutakes and the Aviary, those species so familiar in the green way, have you discovered any others? Yeah. Riko can barely contain her excitement. I should like to see those. Please bring me some next time you're here. Look around the garden, amazed at the sense of peace within it. Rico interrupts the silence. There's a species of mushroom that I haven't seen in years. It was dark, short, shaped like a club. I have that. First founded in those early days when we were working to save this place. It was around the time that we started to lose our first members. They were succumbing to some infection, some mold growing deep in the dark mulch that drowned this place. At that point, we thought we, lo we were lost. And then these mushrooms emerged from the same black mold. We tested them and saw that they contained some compounds that counteracted the mold. They contained an antidote. Of course, as a botanist, I saw this as part of the natural processes of this ecosystem, even if the time scale seems absurdly short. What I am wondering is if the antidote was a gift. It meets your eyes. Perhaps if you are patient, you will receive your gift too, sleeper. You both sit for a while, Rico seemingly done telling stories for the day. The seed might be my gift. You watch the light playing off the leaves and plant around, plants around you and wonder what forces could be in play in this place. For a while you stand and leave with a quiet nod to Rico, leaving her to her memories. Okay, I should, I, I just realized I should go ahead and spend these points. Uh, what do I want? Into it or engage? I'm gonna go engage. That was one of my... I, I remember wanting to go endure and engage, but that didn't end up working out for me. And now I can kind of just get whatever the hell I want because I'm busted. Reroll those. Wow, great reroll. Fantastic. Um, Alright, you need one of these. I do have one. Eager to... Whoop. Go back, please. Uh, eager to see the club have caps that have grown in the aviary. She hasn't seen mushrooms like this in decades. I only have one, so I'm not going to give it to you yet, just in case Imphis wants them for some reason. Because I can't grow any more mushrooms, probably. These are all these are all the mushrooms I'm going to get, I'm imagining. So, here you go. Have some Matsutake, though. Freshly sourced. Cool. Alright, Imphis. Are you happy about this? Oh, Infa says uh, he needs some time to ready the broth. Apparently there are some ingredients he still needs to source. Okay, well that's it for that. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to have the option to uh, follow up on some more mushrooms, but I'll plant them anyway. Just in case things don't work out. Just in case. And boom. There you are. Planted. Good. If we get some more mushrooms, great. If we don't, oh well, it's not the end of the world. So, I should be able to follow up with Bliss tomorrow, right? And then Rabia's stuff is coming up as well. Yeah, it definitely feels like a lot of these quest lines are coming to an end. I'm kind of surprised that you can do, like, seemingly everything, or most things, in, like, one playthrough of this. It's kind of shocking. Not going to lie. I kind of expected I would have to choose a path and stick with it, but even with my skills, I've kind of just been able to become great at everything at this point. Cool. Sleeper, Morris is waiting for you on your way out. How have you been? Surviving. Morris nods. That's the struggle. Glances around. Runs his hand through his hair. I've been meaning to ask you, Sleeper. What's it like? Wallace is suddenly unsure. I mean, you know, what does it feel like? To be a sleeper? Yeah, he shrugs, if you don't mind. Getting used to it. That's good. Balls is really good. I want to say I have a lot of sympathy for it, like having to find a place, having to survive, having no future. He looks down. A lot of people around here understand that. Moritz looks away and you notice him for the first time, not just as Bliss's assistant, but as someone with their own worries, their own struggles, their own life. I feel bad for not noticing earlier. Moritz looks back to you. Anyway, I had a message for you. Bliss sent me down, we scored another contract, and she needs your help. That's the message. He pauses. Look, I know last time the payment didn't come through, but you did good work. Bliss knows that. It's no problem. Okay then, he pauses again. She's doing her best, you know. I know. Nods. See you there. Moritz turns and strides off, leaving you in the corridor. 
Time to help Bliss, and maybe this time you think yourself it'll work out. Here's hoping. So yeah, the follow-up with Bliss is definitely happening now. And that happens tomorrow. So... Sycamore... Is it Sycamore? The Sycamore Seed. Needs to be reinforced and sealed, otherwise the crop will be lost. So I can reinforce bulkheads or sacrifice section. Well, I can go ahead and do this. This is a critical action. So I need to do a good job with this. There we go. Saving the crop. You vent the section in a progressive sequence, allowing Bliss to rapidly rescue crops while you work. You gain more than you lose. Cool. Um, and engineer, I am very, very good at. So we can just possibly wrap this up here today. Yeah. Uh, I can. I'm not going to be able to get some scrap. I can buy scrap. Maybe. I mean, the side reel is coming tomorrow. I could use a stabilizer, but I'd prefer not to. Let's let's go. Let's just go check and see if I can buy some scrap. If I can buy some scrap, I'll just buy some. I'm I'm balling out of control. It's fine. Uh, are you here? Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah. Let's just buy some scrap. Who gives a shit? It's 16. I don't give a damn. Boom. I've spent more than that on my cat. All right. Cool. My stray kitty. All right. Ascend. Let us go, and now I can use my last uh, dice here to reinforce those bulkheads some more. Good. You and Bliss are floating in the bay's airlock, waiting for it to cycle. You pick a few leaves from your clothes as you wait. They float around the chamber as if carried by a lazy wind. Clean work. Bliss bows a little. Well, thank you, sleeper. You didn't do so bad yourself. She checks her tool belt. Seems like we're getting into a good rhythm. The now familiar sequence of clunks and rattles sound out, and then the door hisses open. The moment is do it does, you know something has once again gone wrong. What's all this? Bliss asks a confused looking Moritz. Beside him are a set of crates anchored to the bay floor. He has clearly just brought them in through the bay's freight lock. Moritz looks nervously between the two of you before answering. It's payment. He runs ahead along the crate. The sycamore seed crew just brought it over. He stops, but seeing the lo look on Bliss's face adds, they were very thankful. I bet they were. She clenches her fist. What the hell's inside? Moritz leans over and struggles with the catches on each side of the top crate. As he does, Bliss turns to you. Don't say it. Bliss stares in the space. Don't you dare say it. I'll stay silent. Don't. She gives you a hard look. This isn't my fault. Moritz finally gets the catches free and the lid floats off, drifting up in the bay. As it does, a small brown lump floats up with it. Moritz reaches out and catches it as it pass him, passes him. Is that a... Mushroom. Bliss finishes. A damn mushroom. They paid us in mushrooms? Not just mushrooms. He holds out a clump of tightly packed leaves. Produce. Bliss starts laughing. Goddamn Haifa commune. Should have known they didn't have a chit to rub between them. She knocks a small brown mushroom across the bay. <laughs> well, this is rough. Can I have some of the mushrooms? It'd be good if they were club heads. Stop, Bliss. Moritz grabs her hand. These are good. Fresh. We can sell them. To who, Moritz? Are we running are we running our grocers now? We need cryo, otherwise the whole bay will be shut down. Can't pay for parts with leafy greens. She waggles them in Moritz's face. Moritz is right. I can use them. I mean, I can use them. I can use them. I can use them. Let's raise an eyebrow. What, four whole crates? Even you can't be that hungry. You can take a few, but the rest will sell. She smiles to herself, or at least Moritz will sell them if he's so eager. Moritz closes up the crates and starts moving them. It isn't that bad, Bliss. It's a step in the right direction. He glances at you looking for backup. They'll sell well. Besides, look, like I went into business with a couple of wannabe far looks like I went into business with a couple of wannabe farmers. She asks, Prove me wrong then. Show me this is a windfall. She kicks away towards the new patch together terminal. Till then I'll be working out on how to keep this place open. Moritz mouths a thank you and goes back to moving the crates. Better be on your way too. Poor Moritz. Was it was it Moritz's fault? All right, let's get back down. And I got three Jarol calves. Not that I need them at this point, but cool. 
Let's uh, take another nap nap here. And then we'll see. I, I, I'm curious. I, I don't want to cliffhang before we see what happens with um, the side reel tomorrow. So let's see what actually happens there. All right. What do we got? Let's leave. Nothing yet. Rabia? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to go look at the important thing first. The thing I'm most interested in. Sorry, Rabia. You're, you're, you're fine and everything, but... We got Lim and Mina to worry about, okay? There's a crowd, but you spot... Oh, look at that! There's a crowd, but you spot Lim and Mina immediately as you enter the dock. They're awaiting at the cordon, where Sela Security are checking the crew in to board the ship. Those that manage to get up to the hub are crowded near the entrance, but even they know their chance of getting on board is long gone. Lim! Lim spots you among the crowd. Sleeper! We're here! You're standing beside a bag which looks to carry all the possessions they have. It's small enough to be carried in one hand. Hi, Mina. Mina's vibrating with excitement. She seems strangely at home in microgravity, but then you remember that she has spent her whole life in space. Hi, robot! You hand over the Celis ID film to Lim, keeping your own. He turns it back and forth in the light. Where'd your friend even get this picture, Sleeper? Looks like my old Conway ID. You look, and a shimmering younger limb stares out at the film, harder and clean cut. Spoke to the guard here, he nods uh, to the white and green clad security officer. They'll be doing orientation and role assignment on board. Sounds like we're going to be working under the core crew. Kind of like an intern, he laughs. What do you think, Meanie? Am I too old to be an intern? Following Lim's lead, you inspect your ID. As you lift the film up to the light, you see something strange. Something that makes you flinch. The face printed in the film is one you recognize immediately, but it is not you. It's just not how you look now. You squint at this ghost, confused why you hadn't noticed earlier. Oh, shit. It's a picture you remember being taken, a memory that you didn't know you had. You remember signing the forms, the walk to the sleeper tanks, the cold metal floor. You remember the s and employee who helped you in, her smile clean and surgical. Freeze in place, thinking of the you that still sleeps somewhere in an SNR facility that won't wake until you're recovered and disposed of. Now you're leaving. Will they ever wake up? Sleeper? Lim interrupts your thoughts. These guys want us to board. Stare at him without thinking, then notice the guard gesturing you to both to come forward. You all kick off and float over to them, steadying yourselves on the guardrail. You hang back, letting Lim present his ID film first. Yeah, are they not going to let me on because it doesn't match me now? Guard slides it across a white machine, much like the one caster printed them from. You reflexively rub the puncture mark on your hand. Even though there's no trace of it now, it seems to be your destiny to be someone else's tool. Lim and Mina are waved through, the guard smiling at her excited face. Lim turns back to check you're coming. The bar guard beckons you to... beckons you closer. I want to go with Lim and Mina. Even if I'm being used by caster... Quite frankly, even if I'm leaving a lot of the people behind on the station... I want to go with Lim and Mina! I love them! <laughs> Bored. You shake off your doubts and hand over your ID film. Guard barely looks at it as they pass through the scanner and wave you through. A new life built from old things. You okay? Lim asks, concerned as you catch up with him. You are so slow, robot, Mina teases, grabbing at you with small hands. I'm good. Lim nods, and you realize how much harder it must have been for him to cross that threshold. Mina struggles in his arms, trying to get to you, and Lim relents, struggling with both the bag and his daughter. Mina tumbles through the microgravity and grabs onto your clothes for purchase. Pulling yourself into your arms, you all proceed up the walkway, the entrance to the docking bridge yawning wide and above you. Are we family, robot? Mina asks you as you move, taking you by surprise. Hell yes isn't an option, so I guess I'll say I'll guess so. <laughs> Mina smiles and presses her head against your chest, pleased by your answer. Mm, God. Mm. So stinking cute! <laughs> you keep moving up into the docking bridge, then along that thin glass walled connector. All the time Mina clutching onto you, the lack of gravity means you can't feel her weight. Only the grip of her small hands on your clothes. You both stare wide-eyed at the vast hole of the side-reel horizon, and try to think of this huge machine as a home. 
Later, when you settle into your bunk, after Mina has finished running back and forth between you and Lim with an endless and infectious excitement, you find yourself looking at your ID film once more. Sorry, I accidentally hit my mic there. Somehow, since the last time you looked at it, the image seems to have changed. Still a picture of the old you. A person that signed up to have their cons consciousness copied and placed into the ownership of SNARP. Something else has crept into the image. An underlying sense of self-identification. This is also a picture of you. You now. The you that survived the eye, that made friends here, that found a way out, that escaped against all odds. The other you might never wake up. They might never live again. But so be it. They consigned you to a doomed life for their own gain. Their life is yours now. You'll live it better than they ever could. You lie back on your bunk as the thrust of the side reel's vast engines kick in. This feeling, this rumble, will be your constant companion for the next decades. It will be there when you work, when you watch Mina grow, when you dream of the planet at the end of the journey. It will stay with you when your body starts to fail, despite the best attempts of Lim and Mina, as the years stack up and it exceeds its safe operating period by a decade. Oh, I thought we would outlive them. It will be the thing you wake up to in those rare moments of consciousness, between which Mina will keep you in a frozen state in the hopes of preserving you until your destination is reached. It will still be there when Mina wakes you, tears in her eyes to tell you of Lim's inevitable death, and it will not relent despite your desire for a moment of silence. It will be the final thing you hear as Mina shuts down all but the most vital of your functions, and hopes beyond hope that you make it your final destination all the while doubting that you will. But for now, in this moment of departure, it's still a new sound, a new feeling. And because of this, it's filled with the promise of the future. And so, you settle back on your bunk and close your eyes, and in moments you're sleeping a perfect, dreamless sleep, the most peaceful that you can ever remember. Damn. Damn. <laughs> That's some writing. Shit. Okay. Yeah, I mean... That's a melancholic ending in some ways, but I still think I'm happiest with that. I, Out of all the characters that we met across this entire game, I think I was definitely most attached to Lim and Mina. It's just, both of them are so wholesome. It's very, very easy to identify with their struggle. Obviously, a lot of people were struggling at the eye, but I don't know, I just identified with them so much more, like there was something really nice about it I completed a lot of the quest lines obviously we still had like Rabia and um uh Bliss, who I just recently met, Rico but I wasn't I wasn't crazy attached to a lot of them I, I am sad about Rabia well not, not so much Rabia, but Sabine they were, they were very, very cool, and I was interested in finding out some more about them. But I'm happy with what I accomplished. I think probably if I had to say who my next favorite character was, it was probably Feng. I just, I liked Feng a lot, and I'm glad that that was the route I went to to disable my tracker. I probably could have found out a little bit more about the Greenway, I'm imagining. Uh, with like the Gardener Seed and all that stuff. So what happens if I click continue now? It's just gonna take me back before, right? I imagine so. Correct. Yeah, before before I actually leave. So, yeah. Uh, I think we're probably going to go ahead and end the LP there. Um, I'm happy with the route that I chose and the ending that I got. And... I don't feel the need to, to find every single little thing in this. I, I may come back to this um, on my own time at some points to kind of gra gather some more of that stuff, but I'm very, very happy with how things ended there at this point. This has been an amazing game, and I, I, I got so much out of it, and I'm very, very happy with what I've played so far. And like I said, I probably will come back at some point, but I think this is a good spot to stop. For now, I don't have to do absolutely everything. I might still talk to the 
few characters I, I can get some more dialogue out of right now without having to do, you know, more days or anything like that. Um, I might have been close to finishing off Emphasis stuff, but a lot of the things we have left to do are just like grinding and waiting for time to pass, I suppose. So it's like, I don't know, but we'll do this because this is available. As you enter Rabia's office, you hear voices. Is that Sabine? You push open the door. Sleeper! What good timing! Rabia calls out as you enter. Wanted to introduce you to someone. Oh god. The man is standing at the center of the room, speaking quietly with Rabia. He turns as you come in. Meet Yannick! Sleeper. He nods. Been hearing good things from Rabbi. Smiles an easy smile. Good to meet you. Likewise, likewise, he waves a ringed hand. Now, Rabbi, where were we? Actually, Rabbi places a hand on your shoulder. The sleeper was what I wanted to talk to you about. She doesn't spare you a look. What's going on? Well, okay then. Yannick tucks his hands into his pockets. Go on. I'd like to recommend them to your ward. Tiny paused. They've shown themselves to be a capable ally here on the spoke side, but we have more than enough to run our territories. Here, the main block's proven more difficult. Yannick leans forward slowly. It's a mess, Rabbi. He waits, his tinted glasses shimmering despite the lack of light in the unit. I can use them, he suddenly decides. Rabia smiles. Good to hear. I can immediately... And it cuts her off with a raised hand. One second. Steps one surprisingly light step closer to you. You eager to work, sleeper? What kind of work? Question. Yannick lowers his head and raises it again as if he dropped something. Nothing new for you, he answers, not quite looking at you. You don't follow. What is he saying? That concludes it. Yannick pronounces, Sleeper can come work in the ward, any time they like. Shoot Rabia a confused look. Rabia finally glances at you for a moment, but so fast you almost miss it. Good, and they'll be happy with their work, Yann. Yannick reaches out and squeezes her shoulder. Sure, Rabbi, he says. Now please, he says, turning to face you. Let us old friends get back to it. Guides Rabia away, leaving you standing alone. Look to Rabia, but she is deep in conservate conservation conversation, and so stunned and confused, you leave. Okay, new drive discovered. Yannick's ward. Yannick's trust. I don't- I really don't want to follow up with- with you. I mean, taking you down might be nice if that's what this whole thing is doing, but I hate that I have to do all the icky gang activity to do that. Um... Yeah, we got- we got stuff up here with like... Bliss. There's Lemon Mina. Yeah, yeah, I- I mean... Bliss I met recently, Rico's fine, and I'm not really interested in the Rabia stuff. I, I don't know, I don't like having to participate in the gang just to get, like, Sabine's story, but... It'll probably be something I follow up on later on my own time to just see what, see what happens. But, yeah, I think we're probably gonna go ahead and end this playthrough of Citizen Sleeper off of here. It was very, very fun, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time for something new.